I'd like to introduce Dr. Jaggi Jill. He's one of the founding partners of Oracle Ventures. They are a software medical device startup accelerator, bringing life-saving software devices onto the market. We'd love to hear about your experiences at analytics and what went well, what didn't go so well, and also how we compare to some of the other vendors that you've seen in the space. Yeah, you, John, thank you for that. No, you've got the background right. As you, John, said, I'm the founder and managing director of Ortho Ventures. This is a fund that's dedicated to work with the hospital for special surgery in New York. And we evaluate really concepts that come out of the ideas of the surgeons there. So very early stage. And through that evaluation process, we identify those that we think have great market potential. And then with those, we fund the companies and then we operationalize them. So unlike another fund that provides capital, we provide the capital through our limited partners and through our fund, but we also run each subsidiary. And our uh, mission is to identify four of these concepts and to stand up for independent companies. The first company that we invested in is Gemini. Gemini looks at using standard MRI images and to extract the rich information that's there in a very standard MRI image and make it three-dimensional and really using some of the AI algorithms that is inherent within the founders is to put some data behind these 3D images of cartilage and joint health so that it provides a more crisp diagnosis of the joint, but also affords the surgeon the ability to properly plan the right surgery. Just on a side, when you think about the knee, for example, you have a two-dimensional MRI image, and then you have a very semi-quantitative view of the knee through a scope. And they're both suboptimal. And in many ways, through Gemini, we want to marry the benefits of both and provide a 3D quantitative view of the joint that affords that surgeon um, a level of precision that he or she didn't have before through standard practice. That's the overview of the company. Because this really is at the intersection of imaging and user interface, and the user here is both the surgeon and the patient. One of the things we see in Gemini is there's more agency of the patients to know exactly where the problem is in their knee to be able to understand it, see it, and to drive that compliance so you can afford them the best therapy for them. So the user experience here in rendering a three-dimensional image was tremendously important. And then also the AI aspect, not only the science of the AI, but the regulatory challenges that AI has today. So we had the opportunity to go through actually two other, I will say it this way, competitors to analytics. And while they're very capable and certainly knew the orthopedic space very well, they were, I would say, suboptimal in terms of understanding how the FDA looks at software as a medical device and how the FDA really and tries to inform themselves in terms of patient health or what does AI mean in terms of generating an image. So I think that pedigree that analytics had came across really from the first phone call that they had. So that was one of the things that when talking with David and you, John, they knew this space uh, very well. And maybe to underscore one of the things they said is that they were very proactive in their conversations with the FDA outside of projects. They wanted to know what FD, how FDA looked at this very active and dynamic landscape of AI, specifically in imaging. So that gave us a lot of confidence that they weren't sheepish about, I don't know what to do, or I don't know how to frame this. They really were trying to gather source data primary data, if I will, from what the FDA thinks about in terms of this quickly evolving space of AI and software as a medical device. But that was one example of how they were different from everybody else. And the best way I could describe that is they were proactive in terms of reaching out to the FDA. So that's number one. Number two, 
in our case, we already had a pre-submission done by a, a previous vendor. And they came at this holistically of looking at it and saying, there's some good pieces here, but you got some very vague responses that could potentially put you at risk from a commercialization standpoint. And there's a way for us to beef up so that there's more clarity on uh, how, to, how to address FDA issues or predict FDA issues. And having worked with consultants um, many times, they did not take the approach of, let's throw the baby out with the bathwater and start afresh. They really took the approach of, what do we know to be true? There's parts of the pre-sub that's very good and you can stand on. There's other parts that didn't make a lot of sense. And the parts that don't make a lot of sense have a level of risk that you as a business may be exposed to, which means extended time and extended money that nobody wants. So I appreciated that very fulsome view and not a not invented here kind of mentality that sometimes consultants employ. And then the third part is project management. Project management in my view, doesn't necessarily mean subject matter expertise. So for us, we got the team that was Yujan, who really brought very deep understanding of the space, understanding of the communication with the FDA. And then we had one of his colleagues that was the project manager. And while they didn't have the expertise that Yujan had the really the project management chops to keep the project moving along, the project in this case was getting the uh, pre-submission done. And for us, the pre-submission was done on time, on target. Um, they did what they said they were going to do, and they did it within the budget that they said they were going to do. So there were no surprises. So you, John, I'm, I'm trying to think of areas for improvement. I, I can't think, and I'm, and I'm not trying to be cavalier. I can't think of areas of improvement now, but as we go forward in other aspects of this project, there's always going to be learnings that we have. Um, but I think from a big rock standpoint, they were proactive, they're informative. And I think what comes across is in this space, their subject matter expertise really came across. So we've been delighted with them. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Jaggy. That was very helpful for us. And I also want to say we've really enjoyed working with you and, and your team. It's to get a medical device out in the market is, it is a lot of work and that getting it something that you can sell to people and it's something that solves an actual problem is actually a lot harder than it seems on paper. It really requires a cross-functional team. And I've seen a lot of cases where where startups find an investment partner that's overbearing, that doesn't quite understand the, the med device market, that can't help them with product market fit. But I certainly saw the interaction with Jaggy and also the technical team were one of, were one of extreme collaboration and that it was clear from the point that we were involved that the technical team was very much in tune with the business and the problem they were solving. And likewise, Jaggy and the business side were in tune with the technical team and what the software did and how it operated. And we try internally and in Olympics as well is to break down the barriers and break down the silos so that knowledge can flow freely so that the product team can better understand the software team and the regulatory team can understand the product team, vice versa. This results in micro feedback loops that in my opinion results in a safer product and a better product at the end. And I think Jaggy and his team has really exemplified this model. If you, if you have a portfolio company potentially, you're looking for an, an excellent in, in investment partner that not only will be able to provide you uh, capital needed, but also provide you the, the, the shoulders to stand on to get your product to market. Definitely reach out to Jaggy. Uh, well, those, yeah, very kind words. And I think just to add on that, in our portfolio right now, Gemini, the way we thought about it and having 
the good fortune of launching a number of products and the mistakes that come along with launching those products. And I have a, a long list of those mistakes. This, in this case with Gemini, we were building a platform, which meant that over a period of time, we were going to launch many products. The first of which was a minimally viable product, which you, Jonas, and team are working on. And quickly on the heels, launch another one. So the challenge in that is you don't want to swing for the fences out of the gate because you don't know the, all the answers. You want to put a product out there, get consumer physician feedback, build the brand equity, and then go with your next product. Another portfolio company we have is an implant and it's an orthopedic implant. It's an arthroplasty, small joint arthroplasty product. There's only one product. There's no platform. There's one. So in that case, you've got to get it right out of the gate, which means it might have a longer product development timetable, a longer regulatory timetable, but you know, the business demands require you one product. That's what you're going to put out. And I think. <clears throat> You, John, understood that. You, John, understood that this was a platform and we were going to build from that and didn't let the broader team get into scope creep. Really put some guardrails out in front of the very beginning. So we appreciated that. Thank you so much, Jaggy. And yeah, we definitely look forward to getting not just this first one, but the entire suite of products out on the market and really getting them into the hands of patients and also doctors where it belongs. And that's where it can make the biggest impact. And working with a, working with such commercialization pro partners such, such as yourself, I think that's how to get the biggest impact that you possibly can with these technologies like AI, that the impact there is still largely untapped. And has the potential to help a lot of people, especially those that are not as well served right now, because it lowers the entry. It makes the cognition available to all, which, uh, which is what's definitely needed. Yep. So yeah, anyway, I, yeah, it's super nice to have you and uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to, to working on the future. Likewise. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. That's really great. And it's great hearing all the feedback as well. It's been so far so good. Really enjoyed the team and excited to move forward.